Our next question is on the soft topic of shame. Mm -hmm. It says, professional opinions vary about what constitutes or defines shame. Renee Brown proposes that shame is the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing we are flawed and therefore unworthy of acceptance and belonging. Mm. And this comes from her book, I Thought It Was Just Me, chapter one, page five. Mm -hmm. How would you define shame and what's God's view of shame? Well, I, I have a lot of difficulty with the common psychologist view of shame mm -hmm. because shame is not a causal emotion, it's an effect emotion. And because it's an effect, effect emotion, it's the result of us not feeling certain pain. So, so her definition is shame is the result. Uh, what, what did she say? Shame is the result it's of... It's an in intensely painful feeling, feeling or, or experience, experience of believing we are flawed. Yeah. Um, while I agree that we do often believe we are flawed mm -hmm. and that we often feel shame as a result of believing that we're flawed, the shame, the shame itself and believing we are flawed is an effect emotion. Yeah. It's not a cause. The causal emotion is usually something far worse, mm -hmm. and that is that we've been attacked and berated and belittled and humiliated, generally by our environment and a lot of times by our parents. Mm -hmm. And of course, we then grow up believing that that you know we are flawed so as a result. It's sort of like something causally happened, something um, very bad and painful, where externally there was a projection upon us that we were bad in that moment or yes. over an extended period, yes. that's the causal feeling. And then the shame And our is fear of feeling that feeling creates, creates shame. Which is like a global feeling, I am bad yes. all the time. Yes. Yep. So fear is a, actually the major cause of shame. Or well, mm -hmm. not wanting to feel your fear is a major cause of shame. Now, here we've got to differentiate between shame and what I would call proper guilt. Mm -hmm. Now, they are not the same thing. Proper guilt is the kind of guilt you experience when you know you've done something out of harmony with love and you feel bad about it. And proper guilt is a, is a precursor to repentance, which is a process that we need to go through, it, during which we may feel ashamed of ourselves, mm -hmm. and properly so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and once we allow ourselves to feel the shame of having taken actions that are unloving, and we work through the actual reasons why we took such actions, we'll come out the other end no longer feeling ashamed and no longer feeling bad about our actions, although we do recognise the actions are wrong and we would never repeat them because we've gone through an emotional process which, meant, which was so painful that we do not want to repeat the emotional process. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, we never repeat the action. Now, that kind of guilt which motivates repentance is actually a proper and the shame associated with that guilt is proper emotion that we need to experience and is causal emotion actually. Mm -hmm. But it's emotion caused by our unloving actions and coming to, and those unloving actions coming to scar our conscience and, and then pressure our conscience into operation, mm -hmm. which we then recognise we've done something out of harmony with love. And once we've recognised that, we then take actions. And one of those actions includes feeling some shame about our action, yeah. uh, about what we chose to do that was out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I would call proper guilt with subsequent emotions of shame involved, yeah. which is a direct result of our unloving choices as a person. And those choices have caused damage to our soul that we need to experience the pain of. And in fact, the majority of our pain in our soul is actually related to that. Yeah. It's not the minority, it's the majority of our pain is related to... It's related to the, the unloving, unloving choices. choices we've made yes. as adults yes. out of harmony with love. Yes, and, yeah. and not just as adults. We often made unloving choices as a child, mm -hmm. and, but those choices are not directly attributable to us 100% of the time because partly our environment contributed to that unloving choice generally. But, but we are capable as children of making loving choices. You know, this is something we need to teach our children, that yes. every child, even by the age of three, four or five, is capable of making loving choices all the time. That's the reality. If they had no fear, they would make loving choices all the time, most probably. And, and we can't just say that the fear is the cause of the unloving choice either, because there are many people who have, you know, not, not fear is the primary motivator for an unloving choice, but, the desire, or, but, the, but rather anger or some other emotion mm -hmm. and even sometimes just desire.
causes them to make an unloving choice that yeah. they later regret. Yeah. Now, that's different to what I believe uh, Brené Brown is talking about here with regard to shame. Yeah. To me, what she's discussing in her book is the effect emotion mm -hmm. of other behaviour which is causal, which is the terrible treatment that we've received at the hands of our environment, mm -hmm. usually our parents. Mm -hmm. And this treatment included shaming us, belittling us, humiliating us, and other actions that are taken right the way to violent actions and other actions too that often are sexually abusive yeah. have been taken towards us in the justification of the parent no, not wanting to feel their fear mm -hmm. and not wanting to feel their pain. Mm -hmm. Now, now, I would say that then of all of that, shame is the subsequent result or the effect of, the, of these actions. However, feeling shame will not stop these, act these actions from being cured. In other words, um, the causal emotion relating to shame has to be felt, mm -hmm. not the shame itself. Mm -hmm. So every person that goes through feeling shame every day will find that they will not release the causal emotion of their shame because yep. shame is an effect emotion. And in a sense, they're retelling themselves the, the negative message Correct. rather than connecting to the pain of the negative message being given to them. Yes, there's the pain of the negative message that we must feel, mm -hmm. but we, to, to feel the pain of the negative message, we have to acknowledge the truth, that we mm -hmm. were treated badly, mm -hmm. and most people don't want to do that. Yeah. So what they do is they prefer to feel shame, mm -hmm. they f prefer to treat themselves badly or feel that they are bad mm -hmm. to the core, rather than feel that their parents treated them badly and, and, and that the responsibility for this poor treatment rests upon the parent and not upon the child. Mm -hmm. We want to tell ourselves that it's our fault rather than telling ourselves that it's our parents' fault yeah. that we got treated badly. Yeah. That's what we want to do. And so when we do that, we are drawn towards self-punishment and we're also drawn towards shame yeah. as an emotion to feel. Once you realise that your parents treated you badly and you start going through those emotions of how bad the treatment was, it's very rare for a person to feel shame after that point. Yep. They, 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 in fact, get through their shame very rapidly as a result of seeing the truth. And the truth is you didn't deserve this treatment. No matter what kind of a child you were, mm -hmm. you never deserved this treatment that your parents and your environment dished out to you that caused your underlying feelings of shame. So shame is an effect emotion. Therefore, it is not a causal emotion. Yeah. Therefore, feeling shame is not going to release a causal emotion. Mm -hmm. It is only going to release or, or make us live in the effect of what was done to us causally. So we can feel shame every day for 10 years, and at the end of the day, we'll probably still feel ashamed. Yeah. It's only when we start facing the cause of the shame yeah. emotionally that we will release the underlying feeling of the effect. Mm -hmm. So... so so the feeling of the causal feeling is related to the abusive treatment by parents and the general treatment by parents that people on earth don't classify as abusive. I do classify yeah. as abusive. Yeah. The majority of parents have abused their child in some way. As a child, we learnt to feel some shame about it. We learnt to feel that it was our fault. Yeah. In fact, most of the time the parents said to us it was our fault, actually, mm -hmm. verbally said to us that it was our fault. Quite often somebody, like I remember my father smacking me once and saying, this is your fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to do this, but I must do it because God tells me I've got to do it. Yeah. Right? You know, that's telling me that it's my fault, yeah. that, he's, that he's belting me. In other words, that he's being violent towards me. Now, every child pretty much of my generation, anyway, I'm 50, in my 50s, but pretty much any child in my generation has felt that and has probably been told that. Yeah. That's the reality. And so we've been told all of these distortion-based messages about love yeah. and, and we've been told that it's our fault that violence was perpetrated towards us. Mm -hmm. Once we go through the truth of that and we realise the truth that it wasn't our fault, that it was our parents' unfelt emotions and their addictions to not feeling their own emotions that caused them to take actions like that, then we are now honouring the truth. And once we start honouring the truth, we start feeling the actual pain of a parent who projects their rage at us. Yeah. And that's the real causal pain underneath the feeling of shame, yeah. which is the effect of the pain. Yeah. 
Because the shame is an untruth, isn't it, that yes. we're telling ourselves? Correct. And if you feel it over and over again emotionally, what you're doing is you're telling yourself over and over again emotionally that you, are, you should be ashamed of yourself all mm -hmm. the time. And the reality is that doesn't get you anywhere, mm -hmm. as most people who have ever tried it know. <laughs> right? You will not get anywhere unless you face the truth about how this shame entered you, how the actual effect of shame came upon you, mm -hmm. which is all about the causal emotions relating to the parent's treatment of you. That's how this shame entered you. Now, it might not be just the parents. Like if we went to school at the age of five and we went to a boarding school at the age of five, for example, then from the five to 12, probably a lot of shame come from external yeah. factors at the boarding school. Yeah. It might not have come from your parents. Yeah. So it, it would be more accurate to say this shame came from the treatment of your external environment, whoever was involved in your external environment, or it's the effect of your own bad choices. Mm -hmm. The key for you is to determine which one is which. Yes. Why, which uh, am I dealing here with something that I need to deal with, which is related to my own bad choices, or is have I just been told I'm making bad choices when I haven't made bad choices at all, and it's just other people making, perpetrating bad choices towards me? Mm. Which one was it? Mm -hmm. And if it's the f f second one, the perpetration of bad choices by other people towards you, that has caused this shame, then shame is not the emotion you need to feel. Yeah. If you really want to re be released from it, you need to feel what they did to you. Mm -hmm. You need to feel about those things. If it's related to the feeling of guilt associated with unloving things you chose to do, then yes, you do need to feel some shame about that, yeah. <laughs> which is a part of the penalties of the soul that, that automatically the soul engages with the law of compensation, mm -hmm. which is a law that operates upon the soul whenever we choose to do something out of harmony with love, and it causes pain within the soul that must be felt. And part of that pain is shame. Yeah. And we need to feel that particular emotion. Now, that is a causal emotion, whereas the other ones I've been talking about, which is the primary experience, experience of shame that most people on this planet have, is not the actual emotion. It's not a causal emotion that we need to feel. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, the question revolved around from memory. How you would define shame. How I'd define shame. Well, I think I've descri de described how God's view of shame. There are some things for which we should be ashamed, which are uh, to do with things that we've done that are out of harmony with love that we need to take action about. Yeah. Now, shame wouldn't mean we live in the shame of it. We this would take action about, about it. Yeah. Right? So there's one, that's one. And then the other is the effect of bad treatment to, perpetrated towards us, which is the primary cause of shame on this planet, and that is not a causal emotion. Mm. It is an effect emotion based around not wanting to come to terms with some of the reasons for how it was caused, which are all revolving around how our environment treated us during our childhood years. It, it sounds to me in the first instance you're talking about where shame comes up through a process of repentance. Yep. That sounds like the shame that we experience in that state is um, powerful and transient when we're going. It's, a, it's an emotion that moves through us that enables the process of repentance. It enables the process of repentance, but it also moves us into action to repair the damage we did. Yes. That's the motivation. Yep. It causes us to go, oh, I can't live with me having done that. I now need to try or attempt to fix this somehow. Mm -hmm. And that is the motivation that we have that is motivated by some of the shame. Now, now obviously, if we don't feel the shame, we'll be running around for the rest of our lives trying to fix something that we fixed years ago. Yep. <laughs> Does yep. that make sense? Yep. So if we don't release, if we, if don't, we don't experience it, it yep. we gotcha. need to experience it to release it and, and, uh, and understand the underlying motivations of why we did what we did. Mm -hmm. So even that shame is not causal in the, it's an emotional yes. state. It's really related around the underlying thing that we chose to do something wrong purposefully, mm -hmm. right? And we want to find the reason why we did. Yeah. And shame isn't the reason why we did. It's just the tug on us to look at why. Exactly. Yeah. It's the tug on us to look at why. It's the guilt that drives us to look at why we did something. Whereas the other shame, yeah. right, is, is actually just the effect, the complete effect of somebody treating us badly. Yeah. So I'd like to talk about the second thing in a mm -hmm. minute. Mm -hmm. But you said uh, something where you said shame and guilt are almost the same in this first process of repentance. Yes, in the, in the guilt and shame, yep. 
our emotions we need to allow to pass through us, if we hold on to them, which most people do, they will drive the rest of our lives. Yep. Right. So, so they are effects as well of deeper causes. Right. But they are related to the process of repentance. Without guilt and shame, it's highly unlikely we'd have noticed that we did anything wrong. And under those circumstances, we're probably not going to be motivated to examine the reason why we did something wrong. Yeah. So God has made it in such a way that there's the, the guilt and shame are compensatory effects upon our soul, painful mm -hmm. effects upon our soul. That When we take an action that's out of harmony with love, there's guilt and shame that's created inside of the soul that needs to be felt and released so that we eventually are motivated to find out why we chose to do such things. Sure. Mm. Could you differentiate between how you define guilt and how you define shame? Yes, to me, shame is a very um, a fairly self-absorbed emotion, uh -huh. I suppose you could say, <laughs> in the sense that we feel really bad within ourselves that we chose to do such a thing yeah. and have a tendency to blame ourselves in our shame. Right. Guilt is more, there are two parts to guilt. You're either guilty or you're not, <laughs> is uh -huh. one part to guilt. Yeah. So guilt is, uh, there can be a valid emotion with regard to guilt. In that we did do something wrong and we feel bad about it. Uh, is that what you mean? No, we are guilty. Yes. And the, we, the, it, the true terminology of guilt yep. or guilty is you did it. Yep. Did you do it or not? Yes, I did. You're guilty. Yeah, <laughs> I see. <laughs> There's no emotional connotation to it. No. Right? It's a factual it's thing. It's just a factual thing. Yeah. It's like when the judge pronounces judgment, he says, you're guilty. Yes, you did that. That's all he's really saying. He's not judging the fact how you did, that you did it, that how you bad you bad. are and yeah. you are bad yeah. and all those other things, even yeah. though most people take it that way. Yeah. The reality is he's just saying, you did that and you're guilty. Yeah. Right? So when I talk about guilt, I'm talking about it in the pure sense of the word. Guilt is you did something wrong. Uh -huh. No arguments, no buts. No reasons why. You just did something wrong. Yep. Right? That feeling of knowing that you did something wrong, you often feel ashamed about. I see. So within this process of repentance, you're saying that you feel guilt and shame. And guilt, in that sense, is the acknowledgement that, yes, I did do something wrong. Yes. And shame is the feeling bad about the fact that you did do that thing wrong. Correct. Within that process. Correct. Okay, got you. And if we choose to feel the effect of our guilt, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is the shame, yep. then we'll release the shame and we'll be motivated to find out why we did that thing wrong. Mm -hmm. And what was the underlying causal emotions that motivated us to do that thing wrong? Yeah. So, so that kind of shame is still in effect, mm -hmm. but, but it's a helper. Yes. To help us to acknowledge guilt, mm -hmm. true guilt, from God's perspective. Yeah. We actually, yes or no, did we do something wrong or not? Now, here I'm not talking about when you're a child and you, st you come home and you said to mummy, oh, I, I told the next door neighbour that, you know, you, you, you know, slept with the guy down the road, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, something innocent that a child might do. And mummy goes berserk yeah. and, set, and, and basically treats the child as if they did something wrong yeah. when the child did nothing wrong yeah. from God's perspective. So, so this is a problem with many of our emotions is that we were told they, things were wrong mm -hmm. when they were not. Yeah. And what we've got to do is see all of these things from God's perspective. A person who tells the truth hasn't done anything wrong. And this is where you're talking about the second instance where the shame that we can then live in, this feeling I am bad all of the time, is actually an effect and almost an avoidance of the pain of, hey, I didn't do the wrong thing but I was blamed and made to feel like I'm bad because I did the right thing. Well, uh, it's not only avoidance the of the pain, yep. it's an avoidance of the truth. Yep. See, see, from God's perspective, we are not intrinsically bad. Mm -hmm. for number one. So that's one truth that we're totally ignoring. Also, we're ignoring the truth of how we got to feel this way, which is somebody, and it had to be of somebody in our childhood environment, mm -hmm. treated us as if we had something to be ashamed about. Yeah. That's how we got to feel this way. Yeah. And we need to come to the truth of that, acknowledge that. The majority of people don't. Mm -hmm. Right? They'd rather not do that. And so what they do is they just feel shame for the rest of their life. They feel like there's something wrong with them the yeah. rest of their life so that they can maintain a relationship with their parents. Yeah. Because the reality is the majority of us, if we felt what our parents actually did, 
would find a struggle to actually maintain a relationship with our parents unless our parents were repentant for what they did. That's reality. Yeah. But the majority of us ignore all of that so that we can play happy families. Yeah. And that causes us then to take all the burden of the treatment mm -hmm. and blame ourselves, mm -hmm. which is obviously going to be quite harmful to ourselves continuously. And so then we end up with huge groups of people just living with an inherent sense that they are bad all of the time. Yes, and then acting as if they're bad. So they're yeah. taking drugs or taking drinking alcohol or because they've taken all yep. the blame yep. for what their parents actually did. Yep. Yep. And, and parents with children who have abuse issues, alcohol abuse, I mean substance abuse issues, need to have a good strong look at themselves because there's a high likelihood that they are, have contributed immensely to yeah. the fact that that child is now taking drugs or alcohol as through, a through their emotional, shame. as yeah. a result of shame, as a result of their emotional feelings toward, perpetrated toward the ch children when the ch children were young. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying in that second instance where we're in shame that this becomes... Second instance, no, let's be more specific. Okay. <laughs> where we haven't done anything wrong, mm -hmm. but we've been made to feel that we have. Have, yeah, from our environment. Yeah, yep. from our environment as a child. Yes. That that can become a globalised feeling that I am bad all of the time. Mm -hmm. And if we're honest with ourselves, many of our parents probably treated us like we were bad all of the time. Yes. You or, know, that like, you know, it's... Quite remarkable, in fact, how many parents do believe their child is intrinsically bad. Mm -hmm. I've had many, many discussions with parents who have told me that their child was bad from the moment they were born. Yeah. And this is not true, obviously, but it's what they believe. Yeah. So, you know, they've treated their child like they're bad from the moment they were born. Yeah. So that child's going to have a lot of shame. And, if, and, and the child needs to then feel what's underneath the effect Mm -hmm. which the, sh if the effect is shame of that treatment is, is shame and the cause is the treatment. Yeah, the and pain, the of, pain the, of the treatment. It's the, the avoidance of the pain of the treatment that maintains, that maintains the, the shame. of shame. Yes, because once you realise that you've been treated badly, you no longer feel ashamed of yourself. You might feel quite angry with the person who treated you badly, yeah. but you will no longer feel ashamed of yourself. Yeah. So you'll have made progress in terms of how you see yourself. Mm. Mm. I think it's in Brene Brown's literature she talks about shame being the feeling that you are bad all of the time and guilt being the feeling that you've done something wrong in a certain instance. Can I, can Whereas, I point out, though, that even that has a flawed, is a flawed definition because if you're feeling bad all the time, then I suggest you're not feeling bad all the time. You're not feeling bad yeah, all the time. Yeah. You think you are bad, so you're living in the state of being bad. You're not feeling it. Yes. Like when, when you feel emotions, they generally pass through you, yeah. right? So, so like... And, and to be fair to Brene, yeah. I may have paraphrased her wrong, because yeah. this says that it's a belief that we are flawed. It's the painful experience of it, feeling... That is definitely true. Yes. It is the belief that we are flawed. Yeah. Now, that belief is the effect. So it's not a causal emotion. Mm -hmm. So it's pointless as feeling it all the time. Yes. We need to feel the causal emotion that created it. The causal emotion that created it was how we've been treated. And usually a person who feels shame all the time does not want to feel how that shame came about. Yeah. They don't want to feel the causal emotion. Yeah. 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 So that's that, what I see the main problem being. Yeah. So I just wanted to contrast that with the first instance we talked about, which was about shame occurring through the process of repentance yeah. or drawing us towards repentance. That feeling as we are moving through repentance of shame that you describe, is that... And by the way, it's not repentance for things that from God's perspective we don't need to repent for. No, it's where we actually from God's perspective have taken an action out of, out harmony, of, with love. Out of harmony with love, Correct. our own free will. Because there's many parents that. who want to tell us that it's their rules that we need to repent about and that's, and that's not true. That's either. where I see that shame limits so many people. It limits people in, in sexual expression, in self-expression, in in pursuing their desires that are in harmony with love. It does. A lot of people are limited by shame to do these things that can be quite pure and in harmony with love. And that's all about the parents' definitions yes. of what the rules should be. Yes. But 
in this in this other instance where we actually have taken a free will choice, it's out of harmony with love from God's perspective and mm. we realise that and mm. we are feeling shame, mm -hmm. is that feeling a feeling I am all bad or is it a feeling that is I was bad in relation to that event? Well, the problem with this feeling of shame yep. that is created through our own choices yep. is that we can then start to think that we're all bad even though we've only taken one thing, but we have to have had a predisposition to that kind of viewpoint. Uh -huh. So in other words, there has to be something that's come from our childhood that tells us that whenever we've done something bad, it means we're all bad, all rather time. than yeah. just did one thing bad. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. From God's perspective, you just did one thing bad, yeah. out of harmony with love. Yeah. And yes, you should feel about that, but you'd be far better off feeling the reason why you did it. Mm -hmm. If you stay in the shame of having done it, you will not feel the cause, and that's the problem. Yeah. Unless you feel the cause, you can do it again, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll be unless you feel the cause, you'll be driven by the fear of the shame that's now within you that you yeah. don't want to feel. Yeah. So, you know, now you're opening yourself to further actions out of harmony with love that are now driven by the suppression of shame. Yeah. And that's not a very good choice to make. You'd be far better off saying, okay, I do feel ashamed. I feel ashamed about what I did. I need to find the reason why I did it. There's some underlying reason why I did it. That, that, that then has resulted in me taking the actions I took. Mm -hmm. That then makes me feel bad about myself. Mm. So these are all effects of the underlying causal emotion. Yeah. So, so pretty much all shame is the effect of underlying causal emotion. But some shame is you could say, motivated by the, the guilt. True guilt. In, true yeah. guilt in, yeah. the, in the meaning that I have said it before, and that is, you did, did you do something wrong? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. You're guilty. <laughs> <laughs> That's true guilt. And usually if we feel about that, we'll feel some shame. And what we need to do is go through feeling the shame of that mm -hmm. and, and come out of the other end to the point where we're willing to look at the underlying reason why we chose to take that action that was unloving. Yeah. So the shame can help us get there yep. or it can hinder us depending on whether we suppress it or feel it. Yes. If we feel it, we'll probably, it'll help us get there because yep. we'll go, I don't want to feel this bad ever again, so I want to find the reason why I did it. Yeah. But if we don't feel it, then we won't find the reason why we did it and we're now consigning ourselves to, to the fact that we're going to do it again yeah. or we're going to live in fear of our shame, yeah. one of the two. Yeah. And so we'll do other things that will be out of harmony with love because anything driven by fear is going to be out of harmony with love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but sounds like the most destructive way that the majority of people live in shame is that they're living in shame, not feeling it, and they're feeling that they're wrong and bad in ways that are not really wrong and bad from God's perspective. Correct. And in that case, you're saying living in that state is actually the avoidance of the deeper pain Correct. that will liberate the person in many ways, including so, from the feeling of shame yes. once they connect to it. Yes. Yeah. Now, okay. I've, I've been asked for the definition of shame in this question. Yeah. I would define shame as an effect emotion, not a causal emotion, relating to either one of the two following things. One, the treat bad or, or poor treatment from our, in our environment of ourselves where we then come to accept the poor treatment as ourselves being the cause, and that is not true, mm -hmm. or two, the fact that we have chosen through our free will to take actions that are out of harmony with love and refuse to, to feel about the reasons why we did such a thing. Beautiful. And that's what shame is. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Good. Thank you. If we can add to that... What would you say is God's view of shame? That's the second part of our question. Well, it depends on what type of shame we're talking about. Yeah. So if we're talking about the first kind of shame, which was triggered by uh, bad treatment during our childhood, then God's view of that shame is that we don't need to feel it at all. Mm -hmm. and, so, and God, in fact, doesn't feel that we need to be ashamed of ourselves under those circumstances. No, but no matter how bad we were treated, badly we were treated during our childhood, God doesn't feel we have anything to be ashamed of for, for that treatment. Yep. So that's first. 
The second type of shame, which is the one driven by the fact that we're guilty of, a, of some kind of wrongdoing with regard to definition of God, wrongdoing, is anything that we did out of harmony with love from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, God doesn't feel we need to feel specifically shame about that, but God knows that shame will be the result of us taking those particular actions. Mm -hmm. and, but God knows that shame is not a motivating um, solution to the problem. In other words, a person who lives in shame generally becomes quite selfish, quite fearful, and quite uh, out of harmony with love with the rest of their actions. Yeah. God knows that the best way, and God has designed his universe this way, that the best way to deal with any emotion is to find the underlying reason why you chose to do such a thing. So the best way to deal with any unloving action or unloving word or unloving thought is to find the underlying reason why such an unloving action, thought or word appeared. Yeah. And shame is not going to help you do that. No. It's not going to help you do that. It may provide some motivation to do it, perhaps. Yeah. But it won't help you do it. To, to really find underlying causal emotions relating to why you chose to take actions out of harmony with love takes a lot more courage mm. than just feeling shame. Yeah. All right. And this is where I feel a lot of people in, who are constantly carrying shame with them are using shame as an avoidance technique mm -hmm. rather than actually a desire, uh, using it as a motivation to get to a deeper emotion. Yeah. And, and if we're using shame as an avoidance technique, we are way out of harmony with God's view of shame. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And we need to understand that. Mm. So, so God's view of shame basically is that if it's related to our childhood, it's something we don't even need to feel. Yeah. Right? And if it's related to our own free will choices that are out of harmony with love, then certainly we're going to feel it because it's an automatic compensatory effect on our soul that's occurred. However, if you feel it, you will want to find the actual cause of why you did that. Yeah. If you choose to deny your shame or to live in it, you know, soak in it like a, like a bath, <laughs> Which then is, you will never take courageous actions to find the reason why you chose to do or take those actions that were unloving. Yeah. yeah. So shame can become a very narcissistic emotion if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and many people do live in their shame and live very narcissistic lives as a result. Mm. Yeah. It's very helpful. Mm. Thank you.